This is the Beersmith Home Brewing Show, episode number 78, and it's late March 2013. Today, I've got three members for the Maltos Falcons Brew Club here to talk about Baltic Porter, their competitions, and their 40th anniversary. Today's show is sponsored by Beersmith Mobile, brewing software for your mobile device. Beersmith Mobile lets you create great recipes on the go, brew with confidence, and download, find, and share recipes with others through our BeersmithRecipes.com cloud site. Beersmith Mobile is available for your Android, iPhone, iPad, or Kindle device, and you can get it on the Google Play, iTunes, or Kindle App Store. Imagine your best beer ever with Beersmith Mobile. Now let's jump into this week's episode. Today on the show, I welcome three members of the legendary Maltos Falcons Brew Club to talk about Baltic Porter. I'd first like to welcome Falcons Board President John Atchison, who's owner of the Tavern Services, a cake supply shop. He's a national beer judge and award-winning home brewer. John, it's, it's great to have you on the show. Brad, it's great to be here. I apologize. We, lost, uh, we don't have John's video going, but we got solid audio, so we'll, get, we'll get, uh, get him up here. But I got a nice picture of John instead on the video. And next, we have board member and activities director Steve Cook. He's the club's representative at Southern California Homebrew. He's also an award-winning homebrewer, notably 2010 Best to Show at the Mayfair Competition. Steve, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you, Brad. I'm glad to be here. Fantastic. And finally, the winner of the recent Baltic Porter Recipe Contest, Mr. Izzy Arietta, who works for beer distributor Artesian Ales. He was a 2011 and 2012 Falcons Merlin Cup winner for taking home the most medals in the club for those years. Izzy, it's Thanks. great to have you on the show. Great to be on the show, Brad. Thanks for having me. Okay, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to start with John. John, can you start out by telling us a little bit about the Maltos Falcons Brew Club? Well, the Maltos Falcons has been around for, this is our 40th anniversary. Um, give you just a very brief history. It was started by a bunch of guys back in 1974. And uh, that was four years before it was even legal to, to brew. And uh, we started out at the home beer and wine shop, and we still are. And the club's been growing ever since. It's, we're now up to 300 members. Uh, we're, we've sent off a lot of our former members have gone on to become professional brewers. Uh, we have a great time and uh, a lot of good brewers and a lot of good beer. Now, aren't you guys one of the oldest homebrewing clubs in the country as well? We are the oldest. Uh, we're the second oldest in the world, and we're the oldest in the United States. That's fantastic. Yep. Well, Steve, I was wondering if you could tell us about the recent uh, Baltic Porter Recipe Contest you had. Uh... Sure. Basically, what we did is we had, we had our club. Uh, we, we talked about this months in advance because Baltic Porters take a little bit of time to mature and get a, you know, to, to be created. So we talked about, you know, brewing a bunch of Baltic Porters. And uh, we ended up with, I think it was 19 or something like that. And it was a whole bunch of very large, big, strong beers to be tested by our club before we could come up with the Baltic Porter that we wanted to brew for our 40th anniversary brew, which is going to be brewed at the Eagle Rock Brewery. Very cool. Now, is you uh, actually, go, go, ahead, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry, Steve. I was going to say, you know, basically we, we did a, a full judging of these. We, we actually instructed uh, the members of our club. We had like 60 people uh, at the club meeting where we did this and we instructed them uh, and, and did a tasting of some established Baltic porters and then everybody tasted them. And then we came up with our, uh, our best choice. Wow. And Izzy, I guess you were the one that actually won the contest. That's right. Uh, All right. Can you tell us a little bit about a little bit about Baltic porters and how they originated. I'm sorry, you're breaking up there. I was saying, could you tell us a little bit about uh, Baltic porters and how they originated? Well, as far as I understand, uh, the Baltic porter came out of a robust um, porter English tradition and was kind of a bigger bump up of that for the export reason. Um, the way I was introduced to it was through the homebrew um, society. I mean, this is a law style that would probably not be around if not for just the homebrewers and their passion for all these obscure styles. Um, I mean, these are porters that were shipped off to the Baltic states 
So, you know, the last couple of years, I probably would have been lost the last couple of decades during the Cold War. But, you know, I found some old school uh, homebrewers out of the Maltos Falcons who really introduced me to them. And living here in Pasadena, you know, we have a lot of ethnic markets. So I was able to actually find some Armenian, Lithuanian, Russian examples of this stuff. And I was just enamored with it. Um, you know, it's a little bigger than the English styles you're I'm used to finding and, you know, not as cleanly sweet as the Russian imperial stouts that, you know, are very popular. So it was just kind of down the middle for me. It had everything I needed just to be happy. And it wasn't too weak, not too strong. So it, it's a style that I've been enamored with for my home career in the last eight years. Well, John, what does a Balter Porter look and taste like? Well, I, when I drink a Baltic Porter or when I judge a Baltic Porter, I try to think of something that's kind of a cross between an Imperial Stout and a Doppelbach with, uh, I'm, I'm looking for uh, classic European malt, uh, continental malt, such as Pilsner, Munich, and uh, Vienna, mixed with a, with a uh, debittered chocolate or a debittered roast. Um, I'm looking for... A lager yeast, a really clean beer. Um, I would like to have a little bit of spice from the continental hops, like Sots or Lublin. Uh, so it, it's sort of a. I'm looking for a beer that's got a little bit of a, a little bit of roast character, but not over the top. Uh, quite a bit of malt character, and uh, just an overall full body, tasty beer. Now, how's it, how's it different from some other porters that people might be familiar with, like English porter or uh, some of the other porters that people might be familiar with? Well, you know, your English porters in particular are going to have a lot of esters. They're going to have a lot of, some of them will have a lot of phenols. Uh, they're going to be, they're going to be brewed with hard water. So you're going to get that English mineral character to them. Uh, they'll always be using ale yeast. Um, they tend to be a little bit hoppier than, than your, uh, Baltic Porter is, both in bitterness and in, and in flavor. Uh, while your Baltic Porter is going to be smoother, uh, softer, uh, livelier, it's definitely more carbonated and bigger. I mean, you're going to get more alcohol. You're going to get uh, all the flavors that go with, with more alcohol. Now, what does a grain bill look like for, uh, for a typical Baltic Porter? Well, typically you'll find uh, Pilsner in it will make up a majority of the grain bill or a good part of the grain bill anyway. And then you will have, uh, some brewers will use Vienna. Some brewers will use, uh, Munich. Uh, the malt, the roast malt you'll find is usually a Carifa too, or a, a roast malt that's got the husk removed. Um, so you don't get that burnt character that you typically will get with, or that you can get with a stout or especially an imperial stout. So it's, uh, much, it's, more, and it's much maltier, and it's, uh, I would say, a lot softer. Hmm. Um, John, what do, you use for, uh, what do you use for the hop schedule for a typical Baltic border? Well, you figure for your bitterness, you're going to want to have somewhere between 20 and 40 IBUs. Um, as far as your bittering hops, uh, Normally, one would use some sort of a noble hops, Tetnanger, uh, Howler Tower, or something like that. And then for your uh, flavoring hops, you would, uh, this is what I do anyway, I typically will use a, uh, either a sauce or, or a Lublin to flavor it to give it a little bit of spice. And, uh, but not a lot of it. You know, you, you're going to have the 60 minute edition and then maybe a 20 minute edition or a half hour, 15 minute edition. But, um, it's definitely not a hop forward beer. Izzy, uh, what about, uh, what about yeast and fermentation schedules for this particular beer? Well, normally one wants to go with the lager. Um, and if one does go with an ale strain, they want to actually go on the lower end. Um, my particular recipe and the way I would like to do it would be with an ale strain at lower temperatures, just to get a cleaner, faster fermentation. Um, so how low are you going with that? Well, um, my recipe used an ale strain at about 58, 60 degrees. 58 to 60 degrees, huh? Yeah, so I'm going the higher lager range and the lower um, ale strain uh, range. 
So kind of just that ambiguous um, temperature range, 58 to 60. Um, and then I, I bring mine up a little towards the end to clean it up, uh, just towards the uh, 65, 68. Um, I was using California lager in my um, recipe. Yeah, California lager is pretty clean uh, fermenting beer, right? Yeah, um, that's what I got out of mine. I, I I split my batch into two. I had another five gallons fermenting with the Bohemian yeast, and I that got a little out of control. That went into the fifty-eight degree range and gave me a little uh, off flavors that I really didn't want. Whereas I could keep uh, the California lager around sixty degrees and still have a clean fermentation and still get some of the, char- uh, the characteristics of the malts that I really wanted. Um, I was wondering, John, how how do you go about judging a uh, Baltic porter? Well, again, I'm I'm looking for a, a balance, a really nice balance from it. Uh, malt balance uh, right up front. I'm looking for uh, a a lot of you know medium maltiness, almost some melanoidins in the back, a little bit of a Doppelbach character, but not 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 nearly as to the same extreme. Um, that roast has to be there, but again, it should never be a burnt character. It should be more of a, uh, just more of a chocolate or a medium chocolate character. Um, as far as the, the hops, again, you know, we, we discussed that briefly already, but uh, the hops, it should be well balanced and the, it should definitely, the hops are more or less there for the ride, not to really produce a lot of character to it. And then it should be a clean beer, whether it being using the ale yeast at the cool temperatures or whether it's using uh, lager yeast, the esters and in particularly the fusels should be way down there. I mean, you know, they're going to, it's a big beer. You know, you're looking for a beer that's 1065 to 1090 OG. So it's, it's going to have some fusels no matter what you do. You, you know, that's how it goes. But they should be minimized. and. Uh, the ester character should be more of a current or a burnt character, burnt current character, a dark, really dark fruit character rather than uh, anything else. It's never, never pineapple or never, you know, plummy or anything like that. So how do you, how do you get that sort of clean, soft flavor out of the beer? I mean, what do you, uh, what do you recommend for Baltic Porter? Well, I like to use a lot of Munich myself. I'll use, and I like Munich in almost everything myself that I can get away with. Uh, typically, uh, I'll put a lot of Munich with there, light Munich, uh, a fair amount of Pilsner, fermented cool, uh, make sure my water is relatively neutral. I mean, you don't necessarily want to have Pilsner water, but y- you, know, you, 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 would, you would like to have water that isn't not Burton either. And uh, fermenting it to cool it with with uh, debittered roast, and that pretty much takes care of it. So, John, I understand that you actually entered a recipe in the contest as well. Yes, I did. Uh, Izzy and I actually have to like the same styles quite, and we tend to brew uh, the same styles quite often. And plus, I've, I've brewed a few good Baltic porters over the years, so. I, my recipe was about 60% Munich. Um, I had about, oh, well, maybe 5% Vienna, maybe 25% uh, Pilsner. I had uh, some melanoidin malt in it. Um, I had uh, some special B as well. Uh, and of course, I had the, the Carifa too. Um, I used a uh, Pilsner yeast as well. But I did not use the California common yeast, and uh, so you went with Pilsner. He he went with I, an ale, right? Right. Yeah, I went with the Pilsner yeast, and uh, I thought the, uh, the the hops were, you know, pretty much discussed that. That's kind of immaterial, but the, the uh, fermented it cool and warmed it up at the very end because you wanted to, you know, I wanted to get some esters in without too many, but. Um, and the and but, the base again. I'm sorry that you used a Vienna base or a Pilsner base. Yeah, uh, Munich. Munich. Oh, I'm sorry. Munich yeah, base. M- Munich. Munich first. Vienna, uh, Pilsner second, and then a little bit of Vienna. Excellent. And how did yours come out? You know, I thought it came out pretty good, but at the meeting, it wasn't as great. It, it wasn't as good. You know, anytime you enter a homebrew contest, it's a 
things happen and, and as we all know, you know, and, and it happened, you know, it just wasn't as good as, as I was hoping it would be, but it's, it's still good. And I still have five gallons, so I'm not crying too hard. Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, what were some other choices that you made? You, you said you use a carafa again? Yes, I used the carafa as well. You know, the recipe wasn't a whole lot different than Jeremy, than, than uh, Izzy's. Uh, the, the main difference was I used a little bit, uh, I did use the melanoid malt, on, and uh, I also, um, I did a two-hour boil. I tried to, you know, that's one thing I figured they could do at Eagle Rock. I tried to accent the maltiness the best I could. I even took the first runnings and, and boiled them separately. So and, the, the two two hour boil, obviously trying to get a little more uh, caramel malty flavor out of it, huh? Right, to get as much caramelization as I could. Yeah, and then w- with my first runnings, I, you know, I mean, I almost got that down to a syrup, and not not quite, but a thin syrup. And then I added that to the main to the main malt to the main grit, uh, boil, and you know, it, it tasted good coming in, and it tasted good. It still tastes good now, but it for some reason it didn't taste as is good when it was uh brought to the club meeting so oh well um i was wondering izzy what does your award-winning recipe actually look like well it's actually on the maltose falcon website right now but i'd be happy to read it off to you that'd be great so this is a five gallon recipe um it's ten and a half pounds of vienna uh two pounds of munich a pound of car munich uh four ounces of chocolate wheat ounces of special B, the one ounce of the uh, crappa, which is the, the bitter uh, dark malt, sure. one ounce of black patent, and it's about an ounce and a half of Zoc at 60 minutes, and finishing it off with an ounce of Zoc top at 50 minutes. So you used almost all uh, Vienna base, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wanted to go with the Munich base, but I just feel that characteristic is a little overplayed, and I wanted to balance it out. Um, didn't want to go pills there. I thought Vienna would still give me the toastiness and the biscuitiness that I was looking for. And I, I backed it up with a little Munich, but uh, I just felt the, I, I, I kind of had to restrict myself. You know, I didn't, there's such parameters for this with gravity, infusion, and just the recipe formulation that I just kind of felt that, you know, a little, a little was more. Um, so rather than, you know, normally left to my own devices, I would have pushed the parameters, done 1090, done all, all Munich, <laughs> done a big beer, done a bigger hopping schedule, and kind of let it age out. Um, but we had three months to really produce this beer um, before we judged it. So I was really trying to turn this beer around, but still keep all the essence of style and be true to it. Um, so it dictated my rain schedule, it dictated my hop schedule, it dictated my fermentation. Um, so I think I did a good job. I think I I went down the middle. Um, I did. A, we were given the 1075 uh, original gravity. Um, that was it. I mean, the style goes up to 1090. 1075 was kind of down the middle. Um, I tried to dry it out. I think I dried this out to 1018, and my IBUs came at 32. Um, so everything just down the middle as far as I was concerned. Um, yep. You know, as a homebrewer, I always want to go big. So. This is really, really just me sitting on my hands, letting myself do what I think was right for the beer and the style. So if you'd gone bigger, you would have needed some more time, right? Oh, definitely more time. I mean, um, this beer was I, I want a simplified version of a Imperial Porter, Balto Porter, whatever you want to call it, um, where I, I mean, I definitely am pushing it. Push that recipe came in at 1095 and had twice as many balls. So I really just looked at the malt and looked at what I wanted to characterize. Uh, one of them being really that this chocolate malt, and I always felt the beer needs that to be showcased. Um, so, but I, I didn't want to compromise the color. So this is why in my recipe you see black patten and the little special bee for the plum color. Um, the special bee really supplements the lack of munich in this recipe. Uh, the the crafa really. I, I like pretty dark beers. The right. craft really gave me the color I wanted. Uh, yeah, I was sort of so surprised you really thought out. I mean, I thought about. I mean, we announced this I think in November, and I mean, I thought I started thinking about that immediately. About how I would really 
formulate this beer. And I mean, every ingredient I just kind of stress over. And, you know, even when, you know, when I'm brewing it, I'm, I, I, I'm like sitting on my hand, trying not to throw anything else to match that. I'm believing that this is, you know, this is one of the few beers I've brewed on paper and actually executed all the way. I mean, I usually calculate all the, you know, the recipes. And then on brew day, I have notes of the brew day that are completely different from what was on the paper. So Izzy, why uh, why'd you decide to use 1075 as a yeast? Uh, well, 1075 was a yeast I've been playing with. I mean, I played with it for a year and really I found what it could do and couldn't do for me. And I'm also a really big fan of the Bohemian yeast. And, you know, they work within similar parameters. And I split my bath. It was actually a 10-gallon bath. So I doubled my 5-gallon bath and did two fermentation. And, it, you know, a couple days before I actually had to present the beer, I felt that the California lager was just the way to go. Um, it was clean. And, uh, the malt bill really shined through. And, you know, quite honestly, I was given three months to really execute this beer. And the California lager really executed that beer really well. Um, I, I think with any other lager strain, one would actually have to age it, which is really appropriate for the style, but given what I had to do, I think also lager really executed it and um, got me what I wanted. And you ended up going with a single infusion mash, right? Um, I had to go with the single infusion mash. Um, the beer is going to be, the winner of the, the contest is going to be brewed at Eagle Rock Brewing Company, and they do single infusions. Um, given if I were to do this on my own, I would have done a decoction and really brought out some more of the malt. But um, that's also the reason why I use a lot of Munich. I mean, I, I, I get a lot of the melanoidins and it's an interesting bits of characters out of the Vienna with, with the single infusion. Um, I mean, it's easy. I mean, quite honestly. Do you think about using melanoidin malt or anything like that to try and get a little bit more of that decoction flavor in? Um, I would have normally, but given simplicity, simplicity was all about this recipe. And I think one more malt would have broken the camel's back and I would have added like one after another, after another. Um, <laughs> it, it, it would have been, it would have been interesting, but I think it would have been kitchen, kitchen sink porter, right? Uh, what was that? I said it, it would have turned it into kitchen sink porter, right? Everything but oh, kitchen sink. Definitely, definitely. And that's also one of the reasons I went so heavy on the Vienna. I mean, it just made up for everything else that wasn't there, or at least mm -hmm. that was what I was telling myself. Excellent. Cool. Well, Steve, um, I was wondering if uh, are folks going to still be able to get this uh, this special brew that Izzy put together. Um, oh, no doubt about it. Um, Eagle Rock Brewery is going to brew this beer. And uh, I'm not really sure the uh, actual quantities are going to brew, but they're going to brew enough uh, to be serving all over there, you know, throughout all their customers. And uh, of course, we're going to get some uh, for our 40th anniversary, uh, which is coming up in the fall and uh, should be should be great. We have, we have several beers that we're brewing for the 40th. We're bringing uh, uh, we, we, we just brewed one. It's kind of an interesting thing. We went up to Eagle uh, to uh, Firestone Walker Brewery and we brewed a batch with uh with firestone walker this last weekend and it's going to be a very unique beer it's we call it a brownie wine and a brown, it's a, a, just a very big american brown ale with a bunch a of uh, wine? a bunch of different <laughs> sugars and such in it uh, it's going to be really a great we had 40 falcons went up there to brew this and it's because we got it's one of our 40th anniversary beers it's going to be a, just excellent fantastic how, how do you actually partnership with some of these breweries and uh, get them to work with well, you on these guys well, well, it was actually kind of interesting. One of our club members was up at their brewery and uh, and was talking with the head brewer, Matt Bertelson, and he mentioned the fact that this is our 40th anniversary. And Matt immediately says, well, wow, we got to brew a beer together. And I mean, so what better you know, offer can you get than that? Um, so we just started making the plans. Our board got together and decided to, you, to make this American barley wine. Uh, I'm not barley wine, brown, brown ale, American, um, big American brown ale. And uh, so I fashioned, I actually wrote the recipe and I fashioned it after a barley wine with brown ale elements in it. And, uh, and uh, Matt, and of course it was, a, it was an American brown, brown ale aged in rum barrels. That's the idea. 
and uh, and this brown ale will be part of their anniversary series uh, when it when it is fi- when it is finished. Plus, we'll get some down here, and he might even bottle it. We're not sure. That's uh, that's up in the air. So, but it was an excellent experience. Uh, their brewery is wonderful. Uh, they gave us. I mean, they treated us like kings. And there was forty falcons there. We took over the brewery. At one point, you could look around and see every cat walk in the brewery had a falcon hanging on it. It was it was actually a wonderful thing. And uh, so yeah, it's uh, it, it actually worked out really good. Really, it's good. very cool that you're able to partner up with uh, so many of the microbreweries around the area. Absolutely, and again, Eagle Rock is going to do. We're going to do a brew with them. Uh, we're doing a lot of club brews. We've already done two or three club brews for the thing. I did an. Oh, I, I I led a, a group doing an old ale, uh, which maxed out our mash ton on our our club system. I know John did a uh, uh, an Adam beer not a month ago or so. And, uh, and we're just going to do a bunch of different beers, bunch of different, bunch of specialty beers for the, for the 40th. It's just a lot of fun. Well, that brings us to our next topic, Steve. I know you want to spend a few minutes actually talking about the 40th anniversary of the Maltose mm-hmm. Falcons. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, a uh, our, our club has been around so long that, uh, we, we actually did think we were the oldest club in the, in the world until we got a, uh, a little email from a, 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 a club in the UK and uh, in England. And they said, sorry, boys, uh, we had our club going in 1969. <laughs> <laughs> so they beat us by about four or five years, but uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's great. So the 40th is going to be a big, uh, a big party. We're going to have a big ballroom celebration. We've done, uh, I've been involved with the club and we've done the 35th and the, uh, and the 30th. And uh, it's kind of unique, you know. We we're in a ballroom uh, with with a band, and you know, so everybody's dressed to the nines, and we have a, three bars full of our homebrew, and it's just uh, it, it's just one of the best parties of all time. That sounds awesome. But uh, like I say, that's uh, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. Um, uh, lots of lots of other activities that we're planning as we go. Uh, we're going to be making up lots of different uh, t-shirts, hats, you know, uh, different things for the for the party. Glasses with special logos on them, just like this one right here. And uh, we're going to be making up lots of different things for the party. Excellent. Are are you guys coming to the National Homebrew Conference as well? Uh, yeah, we're going to probably have quite a few folks going to the Homebrew Conference. I can't make it myself, unfortunately, but they should be there. Izzy's going to be there, right, Izzy? Oh, no, I got to work. No, yeah. My beer will be there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I'll be there. We'll be there with the Beersmith booth again. Good show. Um, Steve, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what uh, some of the advantages are of joining a homebrew club like the Maltos Falcons. Oh, it's actually, there's multiple advantages. The number one thing is you get to meet and talk to brewers that are of your ilk. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of funny. We get new brewers and they're kind of timid and they, they don't want to talk. We just, come on, not one person in this club will ever shirk a question on brewing. In fact, well, it'll be hard to shut us up once you get us going. Uh, and they, you know, and they can taste and, 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 and sense all the sensory stuff of all these different beers. When we have a club meeting, we will sample up to 20 home brews at one club meeting. And, and when we do that, we're not just drinking the beer. Our club members get up and do a full explanation of each beer that the, the club samples. So it's, uh, the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll, we'll, the, the call will go out to shut everybody up, brewer on the floor, and the brewer will literally give us the entire recipe, how he did it, answer questions. Yeah. And it can, it, it's, you know, so it can be very academic or it can be hilarious. It's a, uh, it's just a, a really, really good group of folks. And, uh, and the parties, uh, we have three parties a year and they're yep, just yeah, parties. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we have a, a, we have a Mayfair oh, fest. You. We have a sun fest and an October fest. And, uh, and these are three camp out parties where you show up and you, you set up your tent and then you party all night long. It's just a great time. Gourmet food, top notch beer, of course. What more can you ask for? Sounds rough. Well, uh, I was wondering, Izzy, if you could provide us with a member's perspective on uh, on being a member of the Maltos Falcons and, and being a member of Homebrew Club. Well, I've been brewing for, oh, I, I've forgotten, maybe like eight, nine years going. I've been, I was hesitant to join a club. Uh, it took me about a year. Uh, the Homebrew store that the Falcons actually meet, and there's a clubhouse behind the supply shop. Um, you know, I was visiting 
religiously every week. I mean, when my first year brewing, I probably knocked out a hundred batches um, at my place with friends. I was really passionate. And finally, one of the club members really pulled me in and said, Hey, you need to join this club. I see you here every weekend. I'm like, well, what am I going to get out of it? You know, I, I, I later found out that the oldest, biggest, and some of the best brewers out there. And, you know, if you, if you really want to put yourself out there, really take your brewing to a whole different level. You really should join a club. And the Falcons, for me, were just the best people. I mean, um, at the time, I was maybe 30 minutes away. I've since moved. I'm making the drive about an hour just to join these guys, just to hang out with them. They're friends, they're families, they're professionals, they're comrades. I mean, every time I'm there, I just develop every meeting, every meeting, I develop more and more as a brewer. I mean, these guys will not hold back their opinion. They will keep, if you ask for their opinion, you have to be ready to take notes. Um, you know, as Steve said, we, we go through the recipes, we give our perceptions, we give our evaluation, and at, at, at the end of the day, we, we're, we're drinking beer and we're laughing. It's just a great time. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm there from noon until the end. I'm one of the, I'm one of the few first people in and last people out. I mean, I just love these guys. And, um, it's, a, it's a great time. It's, it, it's great to be a member, especially an active member. I mean, we, we party, we brew, we learn, we grow together. Exactly. It's fantastic. Hey, John, I was wondering if you could maybe give us your perspective on this. I've been a member 22 or 23 years. I sort of forget. And I was sort of roped into it by uh, Brewer herself, MB Reigns. Uh, and uh, boy, I just, I wasn't even brewing. I enjoyed great beer and uh, went to a, one of our Oktoberfests and couldn't believe the amazing variety of good beer. And, uh, I was hooked right there and went to the next club meeting and I don't think I ever left. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy the, uh, the people. I mean, as, as Izzy and Steve have mentioned, I mean, what great people you could talk beer all day long and they don't get bored <laughs> and, uh, and you don't get bored when they talk beer all day long. And, uh, it's fun to, to pass on your knowledge. That's, that's what I like to do the most is I, you know, I've taught a number of BJCP classes and trained all kinds of beer judges. And, and, uh, that's kind of fun because you, you, you see all these protégés and they're not necessarily protégés because they go on and, you know, they surpass you, but at the same time, they're, uh, they're learning about good beer and they're passing on the message as well. And so, uh, it's just, the whole scene is great. And, and, uh, I just love being a Falcon. I love being a, a home brewer and, uh, that's there's nothing you can have that's more fun outside of bed well thank you um well let's go around the table real quick uh izzy uh do you have any closing thoughts on brewing a baltic porter or uh the maltos falcons 40th anniversary um i was blessed to have this new style um you know we i was nervous during the meeting about what style we'd actually pick and you know i heard porters and i'm like well i don't do Russian material South End Porters, and I was like, I heard both the Porter, like, this, I knew, I knew I was going to win it then and there. Um, you knew you were going to win it right then. Oh, huh? uh, that was I, it. I it was all I locked up. Uh, John's the president. He proposed this whole thing. I was scared John was proposed an Adam here. And I was like, well, I'd come second to John, but I'm not going to win with Adam. I both the Porter. I've got a couple medals for that. I just got to, but I just got to do it right. And, um, yeah, I, I understand yeah. you have quite a collection of medals there, Izzy. I've lost them. <laughs> uh, he, he's modest at least right oh yeah i, I love competing i mean and um some like multi quarter is definitely a challenge to add you know it's not a very conservative style but it's not really exaggerated style it's really just down the middle it's really sensible and i mean be given the parameters of a multi quarter and then be told to go down the middle don't go too low don't go too high it's a really good challenge and i think i grew as a brewer uh, brewing this beer. Um, so I invite anyone, maybe Baltic Porter or anything else, to uh, really challenge yourself to really find, uh, play within those parameters and find the wiggle room um, to brew it right. Uh, Steve, your closing thoughts? Um, just um, 
been in love with homebrewing since I started. I used to read novels. Now I read beer books. I haven't read a novel in years. Uh, and uh, just uh, we're, we're really excited about our 40th anniversary. Uh, we'll probably uh, be sending you out an invite if you possibly could make it. Uh, we'd love to have you yeah, there. Yeah, unfortunately, I live on the right coast. Uh, I'm on the wrong side there of the country. Well, I know, but hey, you never can tell. You know, <laughs> he may, he may take a trip out to the to the coast. Who knows? But uh, we, uh, oh, hey, maybe maybe we can get a you know make a video for us. Hey, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> anyway, um, that's about it. Thank you. Well, thank you. And um, I, want, I finally want to end up with John. John, your thoughts on uh, either Baldwick Porter or, uh, or the Maltos Falcons 40th anniversary? Well, I, I'm proud to be uh, the Falcons president this year. I'm proud to be a Falcon. Um, as far as Baltic Porter, uh, I brewed one as well. And uh, Izzy had the best beer. I voted for him. And uh, good execution, uh, in my view. It, it's, it's all about the execution. and. Uh, Again, I, I like the malts, and I, you know, Izzy and I were fairly similar in our grain bills, but he did it right, and that that's like with all brewing, it, you got to sweat the details. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you all again for appearing on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. It was great to have uh, my guest from the Maltos Falcons, Mr. Steve Cook, Mr. Izzy Arrieta, and John Aitchinson. Really appreciate you guys being here. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Well, a big thank you to the Maltos Falcons Brewing Club for joining me today, and congratulations to them on their 40th anniversary. Today's episode was sponsored by Beersmith Mobile. A reminder, if you haven't picked up Beersmith Mobile, it's a fully integrated with our desktop version, so you can create your recipe on the desktop device, drop it in your cloud folder, and open it up on your mobile device in the garage. It even has a brew timer built in. So grab your copy today from Google Play, iTunes, or the Kindle App Store. I'd like to thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great brewing week. Mm-hmm.